All right. So what we're, what we're doing is we're, today's we're going to do matching uh, at one loop. And actually, we're just going to sketch it out. My, I, I just this morning came up with the plan for the next homework, and, and we're all going to do matching together because I need to do it. <laughs> and it's just thinking through, you, you guys have, haven't really sort of done a whole calculation start to finish. And so let's, let's do this step by step. I'm second of all, all one week. You know, it's not going to say do the matching. What I'll do is my plan is first week I'll give, you know, you know write the Feynman diagram, write the current, do this renormalization. Next week we do that, this diagram, that diagram, that. And we piece it all together step by step. Okay, so that's, that's the plan. Um, I actually think it should be fun, because I haven't done it yet either, so we have to, you know, who knows how. I, I actually have done most of the steps, and you'll see what I think the answers are, because I, I'll have real numbers that I'm giving you. However, I don't trust them at the moment, is the trouble, is, and so I really need to do it again to trust them. But here's, here's the game plan, okay? So we're, in general, we have this path integral. We have this theory that is, the full theory is written in terms of fields, let's call it S and pi, e to the i action that has a Lagrangian of S and pi in it. And <coughs> The and then there's a plus you know, j dot pi type of thing. The current. We're, we we imagine doing writing this as an integral a theory that involves only the low energy fields and then e to the i integral d for x an effective Lagrangian, so th this is the full one up there, here's an effective Lagrangian that depends only on the low energy field plus j dot pi. And so, and, and the parameters of this are going to be chosen to match the full theory. So that's, that's the, the basic idea of matching. Um, the, the fact that you capture all the important physics by doing this is what effective field theory is about. You know, the, if, if you tried to do this and this ha ha was missing some physics, then that would be a stupid thing to do. But it turns out that you capture all the important physics from this heavy particle by just adjusting a couple parameters. So that's, here's, here's the Lagrangian we're working with. It's one half d mu s squared minus m squared s squared. There's this terms which are the interaction v squared plus 2v s plus s squared over 4 trace d mu u mu u dagger. And then there are these interaction pieces minus lambda v s cubed minus lambda over 4 s to the fourth. Okay. That's, that's the full theory. It doesn't look renormalizable, but it, it, it had better be when we do it. Um, we can actually do a good job of it right here in class of, of looking at what the answer looks like. So this, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to neglect these for the moment. Okay, and do the calculation neglecting those. Uh, it's, it's almost the whole calculation because those guys don't enter a whole lot. But, but let's just see what it looks like. So what we're after here is we want something, e to the i, w of pi, which 
which is the effect, which is the effect of Lagrangian, is the integral ds of e to the i l of s and pi. Okay, so let's just imagine we're going to calculate that. Well, think about what some of our homeworks. We, if we neglect these guys here, this looks um, sort of like our, some of the things we did with the heat kernel. Well, there's a linear piece here, and there's a quadratic piece. But this can be, be written, but looks almost like a quadratic operator. We actually just have to shift a little, do a little bit of a shift to um, get it. to make it work. So let's do that. We'll see what the answer looks like. And then we'll go through and I'll give you the steps in the in the full theory, the complete calculation. Okay. So in doing this, I'm going to make the following notation shorthand. I'm going to let sigma of x equals one half trace d mu u d mu u dagger. And maybe it's bad notation, but that's what I did. That's what I have my notes have. Okay. Um, so it's it's just th th this guy because I don't want to have to write that. It's clearly going to appear all over the place. Okay. So our our Lagrangian then is the following form. This is once I drop those terms. There's a v squared over 2 sigma, which is the piece that has no s dependent. So that's just going to factor out of, the, out of the path integral. There's a piece, it's 1 half d mu s squared minus m squared plus sigma s squared. Um, okay, that's that's the quadratic piece, and then there's a minus a term that looks like minus s v sigma. Okay, so completing this square is a little bit more difficult in principle because I've got this sigma here, but we want to get rid of that linear piece. So to, I'll define, if I take box plus m squared plus sigma on d sigma is minus delta 4 of x minus y. Okay. So this little business of having sigma in there makes this less trivial, but it will turn out I don't need it, so I'm just formally solving it. Yes. I'm minus the delta four. Isn't, it, isn't that what I normally do? Yeah, I'm just wondering why we normally do that. Um, yeah, it, it gives us the usual propagators that we, we do. Um, and, the, and the reason is that the if you take k squared, del squared here, it turns into minus k squared. Okay? so. That, that minus from the two, two factors of i, cancel that, and then you get two propagators that you normally like. Okay. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's just a choice. I never remember for sure, that's why I asked you. <laughs> I never remember for sure if I put the minus signs or not, but that's, that's why I put one there, because it did. Yeah. Why is there a minus? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I think that's it. You know, it's, it's then the proper gives one over k squared minus m squared, and then the the inverse the inverse goes like uh, just just for a step later on as a leading approximation. If you just forget the k, it's d is minus one over m squared um, times delta function. So that's the other thing to remember with the standard convention. Okay, so then you define s twiddle uh, of x is you know this s of x 
plus one half. You're just completing the square here. D four y d sigma of x minus y uh, v sigma. And you end up then with the let me get the integral d four x the Lagrange density of f and pi is d four x. So there's the the piece that just carries along v squared sigma over two minus one half f twiddle, it's box plus m squared plus sigma f twiddle okay and then there's the piece minus a quarter here d four x d four y v sigma d sigma of x minus y d sigma okay so now now it's really easy to do things this is done that's just the there's no s is there I have to do the path integral over s but that's just our typical heat kernel expansion the approximations we'll do here, of course, is that uh, d. Well, let, let me, actually, let me wait on that approximation till till the next page. Let's do the pet, let's do the heat kernel now. So we use heat kernel. It tells us that the integral d f twiddle e to the i 4x as twiddle uh, I want some script d there script d as twiddle that's the determinant of script d to the minus 1 which is e to the i trace log trace is integral d 4x x log d And then the heat kernel technique ends up giving this as e to the i um, integral d four x of and actually there was there was actually no i there there is an i it's here here's here's where the i came i over four pi to the d over two sum over n m to the d minus 2n gamma of n minus 2d d over 2 an okay this this comes out neatly organized as an energy expansion because it gives you powers of m in the denominator these things come out as powers of sigma sigma is like two derivatives so this is already organized now as an energy expansion so that's that's great so this is going to go like derivatives to, to the n over m to the n times stuff the particular coefficients we had is if I take d was um, box plus m squared plus sigma you go back look at that little handout of the a0 was 1 a1 is minus sigma a2 was 1 1 half sigma squared and then the second piece is one sixth d mu d mu sigma. 
double commutator. Okay, that last guy, what it really, really means is that's just box on sigma, which is a total derivative which means you drop it. So at this order, the, the only ones we have to keep are the, the, these first two, which are just this trace d mu u to some powers. Okay. The other thing that, so that, that's, I'll, I'll write that answer out in just a minute. The other thing that I, I did save over is, is this guy here. Um, we also will use use that um, d sigma x minus y starts off as one minus one over m squared delta three of x delta four of x minus y plus order sigma plus order derivative of delta functions. Okay. You, you know that it starts at order. The, the correction is a piece independent of sigma. There's a piece dependent on sigma. But since it enters here, it's already two powers of sigma, we're going to stop at two powers of sigma, two powers of this. So the, the next order term doesn't make any difference for what we're doing. This lets us write out the result. So the final result is W of pi is integral d4x. <coughs> well, the the first term starts off like d squared over 2. I'll put the sigma out there. And that was the one that just carried through. And then the first term in the um, in the uh, heat kernel ended up with m squared over 32 pi squared, if I did the calculation right, uh, 2 over d minus 4 plus dot dot dot. Okay. So that's, you get a term from the lower sort of piece and you get this term from the loops. It goes like m squared. Uh, dimensionally, you can see it has to work that way. v is dimensionful. M is dimension full, but they enter the same way. The next order term is v squared over 8m squared. That comes from the tree level piece, the, the one propagator piece. And from the heat kernel piece, you pick up 1 over 64 pi squared, 2 over d minus 4, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, so the, these dot, dot, dots, remember, have things like log 4 pi. They have the, the Euler constant, and they have log m squared over mu squared in them. Okay. Maybe I'd be worth writing those out at some stage. But then this is sigma squared. And then corrections will be of order sigma box sigma or sigma cubed. So this, this is then our effective Lagrangian. Uh, the, the fate of these two things is uh, slightly different. The, the first piece, the, the v squared piece, 
that actually just go, that's a renormalization constant. That goes into the renormalization of V. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, that's the total renormalization of V. Pions don't change that at all. However, the second term is, is not that case. The second term is not a renormalization. You don't absorb that into anything. The sigma squared term, sigma squared term in the full theory is finite. When when done in with normal, renormalized parameters, we've we've already renormalized v. It's not a renormalization of m. You can sort of see that it wouldn't be just by the way the parameters enter. If it was a renormalization of m, there'd be a v squared sitting up there. There isn't. Okay. Um, the trick on that one is that that's the that's the answer. And what has to happen is that the when you do the inter path integral over pi, the pion fields, you end up with a finite answer. Okay, so you still have to do the pi loops, and at the end it's finite. Okay, but this is just a an example of, of how your bare parameters, this is the bare parameter for the effective theory. The bare parameters is, um, it has this divergence and you add it to the divergence of the other one and you end up with a finite answer. That's, that's the game point. Okay? So just looking ahead, what's, so that, that's, that's the structure of our, our effect of Lagrangian. We'll see there's actually a slight little change when we do it very precisely, but this is all the the places where um, this, this is the, the basic structure. So we see the energy expansion, etc. Any questions about this? No. The, what's the role of lambda v s squared and lambda over 4 s to the fourth. Uh, th those are the terms I neglected. Um, the, they actually do make a difference. So it's not the, the, the detailed answer is not correct. Um, the tree level, there's no real effect. If, if you're doing tree level, at this order, the first term that you get is this. Here's s cubed. And if I will put a little x at the end there, x is the sigma. That is easy to calculate. It's minus 1 over m to the sixth. Lambda v from the vertex with a 2 times um, V sigma cubed. So if that, that would give an effect of Lagrangian, that's minus 2 lambda V to the fourth over M to the sixth sigma cubed. But if sigma cubed, that's beyond the order that we're working at. And so that, you know you can drop that. At one loop, though, there is some effects. We'll have to fight through this. The the one that um, I think is the, is clearly the most uh, clearly important is this guy. Um, so this is sigma up there, sigma down there, and that's an S, 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 S uh, an S vacuum polarization type loop. So if I drew this out for pi pi scattering, it'd be something like this. So sigma would be two pions there, pi, 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 pi. 
that piece enters. And there's also another diagram that's going to be even more interesting to see how we treat it in the full theory. This is pi, 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 s, 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 pi, pi. Okay. So there's There's another one. So there are other divergences that enter besides the one we had. Uh, but the basic idea is right. So preparing for the full thing. You know, there's two things. The first is, what does the answer have to look like? And the other one will be, what's, what's the parameters that we want to use? So let's first do this guy. The, the full answer has to be some function of u. The only, the only things we had were u, which was e to the i tau dot pi over v. And so the answer has to be expressed in terms of that. It satisfies u dagger u is equal to 1. But otherwise, we, we can, we're pretty much free to play with it. We want to keep the symmetry u goes to L u r dagger because that was the symmetry of the theory. So we just try to build things with this. If you try to write you know, something like trace of u, dag u u dagger, that's an invariant, but it's also equal to, to the number 2. It's not a particularly useful thing to use because it's we could write things like we had trace d mu u d mu u dagger that's that's allowable I could square that that's allowable and then the only other thing that you can try writing out so you try writing out well there's there's actually a lot of other things you can try writing out you could do trace D mu u d mu u dagger d nu u d nu u dagger. You could do trace d mu u d nu u dagger trace d mu Okay, things like that. There's, then there's actually just one other combination. We could do trace um, d d mu u d nu u dagger inside of one trace. That's also okay. It takes a little work to show that there's that in SU2, there's only, if I include that guy, there's only two out of those four combinations there. So we've got four up there. I think that's all we could think of in general. But if we, if you work on it, you can see that there's only two. Uh, rather than do that, just note that there's only two linear combinations of linear order. Okay. Um, remember, remember all these can be written in terms of Li is uh, tau I. L mu is 
tau i pi i mu, which is u d mu u dagger. Okay. And at linear order, there's only, I guess this is how we do it, there's a l i mu l i mu l j nu l j nu plus b l i mu l i nu j nu l j nu I guess that's the proof, right? That's enough of a proof. Because all these terms up here can be written in terms of Li. There's only two linear combinations that you can write out. Either the i's and the mu's are both contracted in the same pairs or they're cross-contracted. So the, the general result then, we we can write how effective is some number f squared over 4 trace d mu u d mu u dagger plus alpha 1 trace d mu u d mu u dagger squared plus alpha 2 some other linear combination the, the standard one is trace d mu u d nu u dagger d mu d nu. Okay. So all the all the ones we've written so far had alpha two is equal to zero. So it's actually a tree level. We ended up with uh, f is equal to v. And alpha one is it was v squared over over eight m squared alpha two is equal to zero. That's that's what we got at tree level. And at one loop we ended up with just shifting this by um, that diversion constant. Okay, the, the second issue that we have to address is what parameters to use. Now, this is not just an, an effective field theory issue. This is a, a general issue when you have to, even if you're doing renormalizable theories, you can choose different parameters. Here in the sigma model, we have lambda mu in the original sigma model, we've converted them into v and m. They're re interrelated. There's only two free parameters. But when we renormalize, you have to define, you know, something precisely. So we have to make our choice. And lambda is not particularly useful because once you're in this uh, this exponential representation, lambda only entered in lambda s to the fourth, for example. That's not a particularly useful one to, to renormalize. So I'm going to choose to do the following. I'll t uh, v and m. They're in some ways the most physical thing. What's the mass of the heavy particle? And V enters the low energy theory also, because U would like E to the I tau to pi over V. So V enters L effective, so it's a good thing to renormalize. And M has some, some pretty obvious physical meaning. Yeah, but we're going to have to end up defining them pretty precisely. 
The other, but the other thing I need to tell you is I actually, there's, I want to use a, a, a definition for V that's not obvious to you at this stage. So the best definition Okay, remember V was our original sigma was V plus, well, our original capital sigma was V plus S times U. And so in some, it's the, the minimum of the potential. But that's not the definition I want to use because that's not a very good observable. You can't see that. You can't measure it. The, the so this this part is a bit technical, but it's it's important to, in this case. The if I were to calculate the following in the standard model, and I'll try to make this argument for you a little bit. I take a pi, it goes to a w to e nu. Okay. This matrix element here, the pi matrix element of a left-handed current, so pi i l j mu, the left-handed current, just to the vacuum. That's that matrix element. If I did calculate that in this linear sigma model, where I gauge the interactions. That would be V times P mu delta I j. In the standard model, it's de defined, in the real world, it's defined as F pi P mu delta I j. Okay, so V is F pi is this particular decay constant. Okay. If I Use Noether's theorem to find what the left-handed current is. I'm going to find Li mu is v squared over 2 trace tau i u d mu u dagger, okay. which if I expand this, it's going to look like um, v, v uh, tr v times the derivative of the pion field, the first order plus a lot of other things. I have actually messed up my my factors of i, but you'll forgive me. I'll get them right when we when I make a little handout. They're right in the book, of course. Okay, you can actually see that there should be a factor of i because when I take the derivative of the pi on field, I come up with i p. Okay, so for this this guy in principle is a way to measure V. And in a calculation that we we will do, that's going to be how we'll define the renormalized Z. If you need to renormalize two parameters. One will be the mass of the sigma. The other will be this V. And then everything should be a finite prediction in terms of those guys. Okay. So let's do it. So what do we do? Well, in the effective theory, okay, I'm going to start with the Lagrangian v squared over 2 v squared over 4, trace d mu u, d mu u dagger. Okay. 
we're going to expand this. There's, there's a, we expand this in terms of the first piece is the kinetic energy piece. Plus, then there's order pi to the fourth, plus order pi to the sixth, plus dot dot dot. We we will have to read out the Feynman rules for that. We actually know some of them already, but I'm gonna we're gonna do the calculation for pi plus pi zero goes to pi plus pi zero pi zero. So we it starts off with the diagrams that look like like that. We're going to add to that diagram that look like where these are pi ions in here. There'll be diagrams that look like that, etc. There's a there's a di there's also a diagram. Do pi plus up here, pi zero comes out there, pi zero comes in here, pi plus comes out down there. Those are all the same loop integrals. Okay, if I for from some combination of my old papers in Gasser and Lloydfeeler. I believe that this looks like, it looks like, um, oh, I need to define my, my parameters for you. You probably haven't seen these. I'm going to define, uh, yes, we've probably seen this earlier. S is P1 plus P2 squared. T is P1 minus P3 squared. U is P1 minus P4 squared. Okay, where this is one, two, three, and four, get labeled that way. Okay. Then, what does the answer look like? The matrix element is T over F squared. That's the piece that we calculated before. Plus four over F to the fourth. alpha 1 plus 1 over 96 pi squared uh, 2 over d minus 4 let's forget the rest of the constants for here uh, close brackets there t squared plus alpha 2 plus 1 over 48 pi squared 2 over d minus 4. S squared plus u squared. That's that. And then there's something finite b of s t u, where b of s t u is 1 over 6 F squared I'm gonna, I'll write out a few terms actually I'll just write the whole thing down it's 3 T squared some J of T plus S S minus U J of S plus U U minus S J of U minus 1 over 96 pi squared 21 t squared plus 5 s minus u squared. 
Uh, then J is from a loop integral is 1 over 16 pi squared log minus s over mu squared plus 2. Okay? So, what's, what's there to see in that? Well, first of all, you, you can see that everything at one loop comes out at order t squared. So this is the piece that we had before from that lowest order piece. That's not changed at all in this calculation. Everything comes out at order energy to the fourth. Here's t squared, center mass energy squared, u squared. It's all energy to the fourth. All these guys, too. You see divergences that look just like the terms that were in the original Lagrangian. There's nothing that, that looks different than that. You know, so it would be, would be bad news, for example, if alpha 2 got multiplied by s squared, but the divergence got multiplied by s squared plus u squared. Then, then you wouldn't be able to renormalize the theory. It would just wouldn't work because there'd be no parameter there to, to bring that in. That doesn't happen. The other thing you see is in here, you get imaginary parts. These guys, the logs, come from the loop diagrams. There are cuts in those loop diagrams. Those cuts bring in imaginary parts. So some of these, log of minus s, s is a positive number. So log of that has picks up a minus i pi. So there are imaginary parts that sit here. It would also be bad if, if the the divergent pieces had imaginary parts because then your renormalized parameter would be imaginary and that would be bad news. Okay. So, but it doesn't happen that way. It happens the way we, we, we like it to happen. All these guys get finite pieces. Those are finite one loop effects. This is what we often call the unitarity piece, but it's clearly from loops. That's that's roughly the exploration of that. Anyone have questions about pieces of that? Yes. So, I mean, that whole front is alpha two plus that divergent part. Yes. That, will that go into the renormalized alpha two? Yes. So basically, what we're going to uh, do, I'll, I'll now write down the result, what I think the result is of the full theory. We're going to see different numbers here. They'll, they'll be finite numbers because the full theory is, ev is everywhere finite. So I'm going to identify a renormalized alpha 2 and a renormalized alpha 1 as these combinations. Okay. And that they will then be the renormalized parameters that you express your, your theory in terms of. Okay, so then the full theory. The full theory, so there's lots of diagrams. As I say, I think you know, some of the ones that we didn't do yet are or this this guy, but you know, we'll we'll have to explore that. I here's what I think the answer is um, in the full theory. That the matrix element for this is T over renormalized V squared plus um, 4 over v to the fourth, 2 v squared over 8 m squared minus 35 over 144 pi squared, t squared. And then over here I get minus one one minus eleven over seventy two pi squared s squared plus u squared plus then order s to the fourth plus something I'll call b sigma of s t and u where b sigma is the same 
except that j sigma is 1 over 16 pi squared log minus s over m sigma squared or m squared plus 2. So it's the same function. It comes, it comes basically from the same diagrams. This is the way you get that is it's, it's going to be the same diagrams there. But since the theory comes out finite, once you express everything in terms of renormalized parameters, there is no dependence on mu left. Okay. So here's our full theory. There's, there's a nice, well-defined answer. The other one is the effective theory. And then you define You know, alpha 1 renormalized is alpha 1 bare plus 1 over 96 pi squared times the 2 over d minus 4 plus dot dot dot. Alpha 2 renormalized is alpha 2 bare plus the 1 or 48 pi squared. And then matching is just the statement that you identify you identify alpha 1 renormalized of mu Okay, actually I, sh I should be precise because actually I, I want that mu dependence out there. So let's go back and put what I really put in here. It's minus, it's plus one half log four pi minus gamma. So that's, that's what I include in there. There is no mu dependence in there. Uh, up here I, yeah, I should have written these things out in more detail. I was trying to rush, but there is in here plus log um, mu squared from when you do dimensional regularization. Actually, there isn't there. It's the, you know, the mu is all down here. That's, I'm sorry. There it is. Right there is the mu. Okay, so y if you... But if you work through it, you end up with the claim is uh, is is v squared over eight m sigma squared plus one over twenty four pi squared log m sigma squared over mu squared minus thirty five over six and alpha two we normalize is one, 1 over 12 pi squared log m sigma squared over mu squared minus 11 over 6. Okay, so what that means is that these two formulas are exactly the same to this order if I call that combination up there with the renormalized parameter and then I use this with those values. We see that the renormalized parameters depend on mu. But that's just because the rest of the formula depends on mu. Okay. Yes. So <coughs> in the previous calculation we just did, right. it was basically just all one loop diagrams with S. And it was just yeah, that's right. Just S in the external part. So the the the, the heat curve the that's right the the one with the um, heat curl that we did 
was a subset of the diagram. Uh, and so I, we left out a few that I pointed out, but like vacuum polarization and that triangle one. I think those are the only important ones. I mean, I, as I said, I haven't gone through it completely at this stage. But I think those are the only important ones we left out. The um, uh, yeah, and then the the so the answer we got there had slightly different coefficients there. We if you if you wanted to make the identification, basically we had the alpha one term there. Um, from the, the contributions to alpha 1 from the sigma loops, if you add the pi on loops in, you should get back the full answer. But it actually didn't, doesn't work out quite numerically. It doesn't look that way. So it looks like there's some divergences also that need to go into that. They come from those other diagrams. But that's what we'll, we'll try to all sort out. So the, so what have we accomplished here? But actually, anyone else have anything else to ask about that? That's 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 the idea of matching. You take your full theory, you take your effective theory, you do the same calculation in both, and that allows you to identify the parameters. Okay. okay. What we've we've done though is is actually interesting. Is we've reduced. all the effects of the sigma, or, or the s, to, to three numbers, v squared, um, alpha 1, and alpha 2. Those are the only, the only effects of that. All, everything else is in this, the effect of Lagrangian. So we've taken everything and put it into those constants. We then don't have, in other processes, we no longer have to do the, the full theory. You just use the effective theory. Okay. And so if you wanted to do, in this case, if you wanted to do something in QED, QCD, like pi, to E nu gamma, Th there's one that's, that, you know, if you do the same process, you, it's a, there's a little modifications, but with the photons around and, and W's around. But it's basically the same calculation. You can express that result in terms of these, these parameters without having to do the whole effective field theory calculation, which could be quite painful. I mean, the full calculation, which could be painful. Or you could do pi pi goes to 4 pi, things like that. All those are done. Okay. The, I'll see. I'm going to stop there. I think actually, I let's let's say questions. I I, I I thought that was where I was going to end. I have I have the next thing I want to do, but I was going to make it a little fancier. So I want to fancy it up for you next time. Yes. Going back to the diagram you had. Yeah. So Which you had the pi going to uh, these guys. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the last thing you did. The very last. The yes. Half, half. That one. Yes. So you have the pi going to the gamma and then the w. So if you did yeah. the effect Right. Yeah. So, so the effective field theory has, has two parts there. One is that the W is reduced down to a point. So that that part's true. But that's a that's the electroweak effective theory. There's also the the pion effective theory there, that where where this stuff here, the all that stuff, gets an effective field theory treatment by chiral perturbation theory. So. To do this to this order, for example, you do things like you would do pi 
w, so that's basically the current there, but there'd be loops like pi pi hooking up to a gamma that you'd have to include. Okay. But you there'd be a whole bunch of things that you don't have to include by because you're using the effective field theory. Um, let's take one for example if if we had the the equivalent one there, pi 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 gamma w in the full theory would exist, but that's that the S has been integrated out now, so it, you don't need to do that. This piece, if you needed to do it, is, is buried into that vertex there. So all the effects of the S, you know, there's, there's, there'd be tons of diagrams for this. There'd even be more than there is for pi pi scattering because because it's a it's an additional process. They, they all get buried down in just these few parameters, and then you just do a simple simpler calculation. Okay? Good. Anything else before we go? All right, good, we'll see you next time. Next, so next time I'll actually have a sort of the, the first step plotted out for us, for us together to do.